Broadway's my beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Broadway, it's the end of the dream and the start of the wilderness, the dumping ground of odds and ends and beginnings and leftovers. It's a place to stop and take the kind of pleasure you need. It's a street of neon names that beckons to your loneliness. And you better hurry, kid, because it's a street where your name is written on water. It's Broadway, my beat. At 11.45 on a January night, you look down on Broadway and watch it generate its own heat. Like I was doing from my office window at headquarters. Then a call came from a shy caller. He preferred to be anonymous, he said. And he gave an address and he said I'd better come there. He said not to knock, to walk right in. And his disguised voice couldn't disguise the urgency in it. So I went. The address was on 116th Street, just off Amsterdam, a section where the posters are in Spanish and furtive laughter mixes lightly with a dimly heard tango rhythm. The street was dark and there were no house numbers. I beg your pardon, where's number 212? Hmm. Thanks. Open up, it's the police. Okay, I'm coming in. She sat there, like death almost. Only her fingers moved, whipping the strings of a guitar. Black hair spread over her shoulders, and frozen eyes, and a single tear. And near her, sprawled on the floor, a man. A man and the knife in his heart. A dead man. What happened here? Who are you? Who is this man? Her hands lost the guitar, searched for it, then her body twisted slowly to the floor. Even in the moment of her final embrace of shock and nothingness, the movement was somehow exquisite and dance-like. And the pattern they made, the girl and the boy, was a pattern of torment and death. Then the cold cycle of murder began. The dead boy's wallet established him as Roberto Segura, and this room was his home. Dr. Sinsky reported that the boy had been dead for three hours, probably killed at about nine o'clock. The girl was Christina Perez. She was in extreme shock and should be taken home. She was. I waited until morning to go back to her. You desire something, senor? I'm Danny Clover of the police. I want to talk to Christina Perez. Please, come in, senor. Thank you. It's necessary first to be granted the permission of Don Eduardo. Oh? The father of Christina. I see. And you, you're... Christina is the child of my body also. I am the mother of Christina. Wait here for a moment, please, senor. Of course. Sí, señora. Una persona de policía, señor Clover. Él quiere hablar con Cristina. Ah, sí. I am Don Eduardo Perez, señor. The heritage of my forefathers demands I say you are welcome in my house, but I will not say it for the reason that I abhor your presence. I was told I needed your permission to talk to Cristina. See, I'm asking you for it. Have you observed, señor, that your feet are standing on the tiles of the immortal artist Goya? Everything else in my house is at least of equal value. Some possessions are even more extraordinary. I'm happy for you, Eduardo. Christina, where is she? Even more extraordinary, more delicate, more fragile. Christina is such. You mean I can't see her? I think I have made it plain. No, Eduardo, it's all cluttered up. Explain it to me. Your own doctor said my Christina was in shock. You do not believe your workmen like doctors? Yeah, I do. Dr. Sinsky's a good workman. He said Christina should be over it by now. My physician says no. 
And now you must go, senor. You must have many official duties. I'm glad you said that. I do, Eduardo. Like the murdered boy, Roberto Segura. Did you know him? He was not permitted in my house. Still, Christina was in love with him. She was not. She was not not with that. But she was with him when he was dying and dead. Maybe she was with him when someone put a knife into him. This you will have to wait to find out, senor. Only until my Christina is well. Until you are permitted to see her. I'll wait. Keep watching over Christina. I don't want her to get lost, Eduardo. She's in your custody. Is that plain, Eduardo? Don Eduardo Perez smiled his finest Castilian smile to make it known that it was plain. He made it even plainer by looking my hat onto my head, then staring me out of the door. I called headquarters. They had a couple of things for me. They'd searched Roberta's room and noted that the only bright spot in the otherwise drab walk-up was a color photograph of Christina Perez. And then they may be important thing. Roberto had a roommate, one Johnny Martinez. A dishwasher, they told me, because they'd checked in a restaurant on 112th Street. That's where I went to see Johnny Martinez. Your name Martinez? Johnny Martinez? Uh Uh-huh. Where'll I put down these dishes? Yeah, I'm Johnny Martinez. Haven't I seen you before? Maybe my back was turned, because I don't remember you. You're a boxer, aren't you? I've seen you at the fights. You must have come early to see me. Never fought better than the first four-round prelim. I got yellow in one fight. Never left me. I'm from the police. My name's Danny Clover. What have you been doing? I've been doing a jail for a year and a day. Tuesday will be an anniversary of my being out three months. What'd they get you for? Attempted robbery with a weapon. I stuck a shiv at a small man with glasses. He hit me over the head with a briefcase and knocked me cool. I lost that like I lost everything else. You roomed with Roberta Segura. You know I did, else he wouldn't be here. Know any reason why he should be murdered? Sure, somebody hit him. You? No. Mm-mm. Not me. Papers say Roberta was killed at 9 last night. I was here till 10.30. For eight hours, all the time. Ask the proprietor. Yeah. Tell me about Roberta, Johnny. What was he, Clover? A guy with long sideburns, a family trade from Guadalajara, and maybe a buck thirty-five in his pocket. Like me. You're a bitter boy. No, no, not bitter. I read the right papers. Roberto never would. Do you know Christina Paris? <laughs> I'm not trying to stall you, Clover. Takes a second to gather up all the nice things about her and turn them into a smile. That way, huh? Do you know her, Clover? Have you talked to her? Have you looked at her? Only she loved Roberto. I know. Now what? Roberto is dead. Now I can try my best. Now I'll get haircuts and be a gentleman. And in a week or so, Christina will smile. Because I'll say something that'll amuse her. Anything else, Clover? Yeah. What did Roberto do last night? What were his plans? Same as always. He spent the evenings at Papa Candelari's place. I guess last night, too, part of it. Papa Candelari, huh? What's that? Upstairs, private club for the natives, Clover. Tried 1203, 116th Street. Upstairs, but legitimate. They open at 9 and a p.m. Thanks, Johnny. I'll see you. Yeah, sure. I'll look for you. Who sent you? <laughs> Hello. What's your name, kid? Joe. Joe Candelaria. I am 11 years old. I am in the seventh grade. And when I'm a case, I am allowed to stay up until 12 o'clock at night. Hmm? What's your name, kid? Danny. Danny Clover. Danny? I like that name. <laughs> then you won't mind that I'm from the police, huh, Joe? Mine? I am delighted. You are my brother. Huh? Positively my brother. I myself am a private ojo. What? Private ojo. He's Spanish for private eye. Oh, oh, I'll bet you're good, Joe. The best, sweethearts. Nothing escapes from my keen eye, my keen intelligence. Only last night, I saw a big black car with two hoodlums sitting in it with dangerous machine guns. Uh, Joe, I... The other day, I found a lady's glove. One glove. And I knew she was in desperate trouble because she left behind one glove. And this to Joe Candelaria was a clue. I hate to break it up, Joe, but I've got to get in there into the club. Is it all right? Oh, 
you are on a case, too? Yeah, Joe, that's the way it is, a case. You understand, as a fellow professional. Don't speak further. I understand. It's a room at the end of the hall, brother. Thanks, pal. Good luck, sweethearts. I'll go back to my post. The room at the end of the hall was without windows. Its walls whitewashed to better display the posters of gypsy dancers in scarlet, of bullfighters in gold, and of wounded bulls on yellow sand. The shadows of the men that filled the room were black and of great depth. Over it all hung a veil of cigar smoke and the odor of licorice. And in the center, in a cleared space, dancing to savage music was Christina Perez, like some animal in fury. Watching her at a little marble-topped table was her father, Don Eduardo. Your physician, Eduardo. He prescribed this for Christina. I am fool. Christina is dancing. Flame. Tiger. Look at her. Is it all right if we talk now, Eduardo? Christina is a sublime artist. Makes me ill to be distracted when she dances. What do you want, senor? I put Christina in your custody because you said she was too sick to talk to me. She got better fast, didn't she, Eduardo? As you say, senor, she got better fast. You still wish to speak with her? Yeah, I still wish. My Christina is in her dressing room. It is through those curtains and down a hall. Yeah. Hey, what, what? Whoever it was didn't answer me. Whoever it was, was pounding on me. Over and over. Whoever it was. Who... You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Benny and Bergen, Crosby and Groucho, Luigi and Irma. There's a lot of sheer exuberant fun around on CBS in the nighttime. But don't forget that every weekday, Monday through Friday, some fellas who are very good at being entertaining are right here. Reading from right to left, left to right, and right down the middle... They are Gary Moore, Art Linkletter, and Arthur Godfrey. Yes, every day, Monday through Friday, over most of these CBS stations. Broadway is a place that hardly ever gets excited. It takes the winning of a war to do that, or the opening of a musical comedy. The best response you can expect for a murdered boy in a cheap room is polite applause. This for maintaining the violent death rate of the city. And a man can lie in an alley in a tortured, painful sleep, and Broadway tiptoes right by him. And the next morning, the man can walk down the subway steps, wiping blood off his face, and Broadway will turn its back. It's a tired movie they've seen before. I know all this because it happened to me. No one gave me a backward glance until I returned to headquarters. Then I got clucked over by two mother hens at the infirmary, Dr. Sinsky being efficient and Sergeant Tartaglia being nervous. Does, does it hurt much, Danny? It hurts, Tartaglia. Well, now, don't you worry about a thing. Just that you should get okay again. Just that your head should look symmetrical. You know, Danny, this is an interesting formation you got on top of your head here. The bump on top of a lump. I could write it up for the journals. <laughs> Take it easy, Doc. Read me what you got so far, Tartaglia. Yeah, sure, Danny, sure. Now, in the matter of suspects, we have none for the following reasons. The deceased, Roberto Segura, being deceased at 9 o'clock, that lets out Johnny Martinez, who was at his place of business until 10.30. Check. Senor and Senora Perez in each other's company until 10 p.m. Check. And about the girl, Christina... Grab hold to the table, Danny. This might hide her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was that stuff? Uh, here's the bottle, Danny. Yeah, but what is it? Uh, a doctor's free sample a commercial laboratory sent me this morning. First time I tried it. Right, sir. It's a good sign. The girl Christina, Danny. Not only don't we get an alibi from her, we don't get her either. 
She's missing, Danny. What? Hey, get back on the table, Danny. Where do you think you're going? I got only one place to go, Doc. Get me a squad car to Taglia. Papa Candelario? Si, senor. Que quiere? I was here last night. You must have seen me. You know who I am. No entiendo, senor. You mean you don't understand English? No English. No entiendo. Uh, try hard, Papa. I'm of the police. Police, understand? No entiendo, senor. Uh, try this. I was beaten up here last night. This could make trouble for Papa Candelario. Big trouble. Papa Candelario? Yo soy Papa Candelario. Que quiere, senor? <sighs> Cristina Perez, Papa. What does that do to you? Cristina Perez? Ah, muy linda, muy linda mujer. Yeah, Papa, yeah. Christian Perez, that's right. Where is she? She was here last night. She's disappeared. Oh, look, who is here? My brother, Danny Clover. Joe. Joe, am I glad to see you. And I am glad to see you, Sir Sweetheart. You know that big case I was working on? A big black car with a gun sauce? I think it is all solved. Joe, Joe, listen. I, I want you to do something for me. Anything, Danny. You are my brother. I want you to translate for me. Huh? I have to ask your father some questions. He doesn't understand English, so I want you to translate for me. Papa, please. Danny is my brother. Please speak to him. All right, Jose. I, I will tell him. Oh, then you do. Si, senor. I do speak English. I only tell you this because it is the wish of my son, whom I love. You will find Cristina Perez with her mother at the convent of Santa Cecilia. That is all I can tell you. Oh, Papa, you are my brother. Papa is now a brother to both of us, huh, Danny? Yeah, Joe. Thank Papa for me, and you too, kid. Thanks, brother. The convent of Saint Cecilia stood high on Morningside Drive. A sister led me through a courtyard and into a gray stone building and into a room. A large room, simply furnished. She told me to wait. Then she left. It was 15 minutes before the door swung softly open again. Senora Perez and his daughter, Christina. They didn't seem surprised to see me. They walked to a cast iron bench and sat down and folded their hands and waited. Senora Perez? Who was it that sent you to us, senor? Papa Candelario. This is difficult to believe. No, mother. It isn't difficult. You must realize, like I do, that it's useless to hide from the police. Why are you hiding, Christina? My mother thought it was the best way. Now it doesn't matter. Well, that still doesn't explain very much. You were in Roberta's apartment when I found him dead. You were dancing when you should have been sick. You ran away when you should have been available. Let's start up top and see why. I was supposed to meet Roberto. A rendezvous, Mr. Clover. On the night he died. He was late. I went to his place to look for him. I found him dead. Go on. I danced because my father wished to look at me dancing. I do not disobey my father. Under any circumstances, never, Christina. Mr. Clover. Mr. Clover isn't a fool. He'll find out anything. Christina, enough. You have said already too much. And I ran away because my mother wished me to run away. I do not disobey my mother either. Tell me something, Christina. Tell me about Roberto. I loved him. Your father. What was his reaction to Roberto? My father hated him. Roberta had a roommate, Johnny Martinez. What about him? My father hated him. I'm getting the impression that your father hated anyone who had an emotion about you. Senor Perez, he is evil. I tell you this because you should know it. I tell you he is evil. You will never return to Senor Perez. You understand why, Senor. I'm beginning to. What now, Christina? What are you going to do now? That depends on you, Mr. Clover. Am I arrested? Not if you stay right here, you're not. It will be like that, then. Good. Don't worry about anything, Senora Paris. If what you say is true, your husband had his own type motive for killing Roberto. Except for one thing. And that is what, Senor? 
He just couldn't have done it. You're his alibi for nine o'clock. He was with you when the murder was done. Maria Perez sank to her knees, drew the black lace shawl close about her head. With the fingers of her clasped hands moving endlessly in a kind of torn pleading, began a voiceless prayer. Christina looked at me for a long time, her eyes empty and staring. At the door, I turned back for a moment, and Christina had not moved, had not changed. It was hard to believe that this was the girl who danced with fury and like flame. At headquarters, nothing added up. Nothing took shape. Motives were there, but alibis were there too. Hard, cold, unbreakable. No one, it seemed, was around when Roberta Segura was murdered. They had reason to be there, but they hadn't made it. They were somewhere else. I don't like busting in, Danny. What but... do you want, Tartaglia? Well, you have a visitor. Tell him I'm busy. I'm out. Anything you think of. Oh, I tried, Danny. I tried, but it's no use. Your visitor is... Uh, now, wait. Let me see. Uh, Don Jose Miguel... It's me, yeah. sweethearts. Joe. Joe Calendaria. Hello, kid. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Look, kid, I'm pretty busy right now. I... Oh, sure. Okay, Danny. But look, Joe... How would you like to have Sergeant Tataglia show you around police headquarters? Oh, that would be super keen. Do you mean it, Danny? Sure, kid. Take Joe around, Tataglia. Everything. It works. Sure, Danny, sure. Come on, let's go, Don Jose. Wait a minute, Sergeant. First, I must tell Danny it's all solved, my case. The black card, the glove, it's all solved. Let's go, Sergeant. Hey, wait a minute. What's this about the black card, Joe? You're always talking about it. Very mysterious, Danny. This black card was standing there for a long time. With all its windows open. Oh, that's bad, huh? I don't know about that, but it is very mysterious. Because it was so cold that night. So cold, I wore my hoppy shirt and my hoppy jacket and my hoppy hat. Where was this car, Joe? In front of the house of Don Eduardo Perez. Oh? When was it, Joe? Night before last? That's right. Night before last. 11 o'clock by my Mickey Mouse watch. Who was in the car, Joe? You said there were two men. Did you recognize them? See, si, see. Si. Who were they, Joe? Who were they? Do not ask me, Danny, because I cannot tell you. Why? A good detective should tell other detectives, Joe, when he has something important. I cannot tell you, Danny, because I am not a good detective. I am only an afraid detective. I cannot tell you. Now I cannot see police headquarters? Oh, sure, Joe. Sure you can see it. Go on, Tataglia. Take my brother Joe around. <laughs> Senor Clover. Yeah, Eduardo. Senor Clover. Invite me in. You have come to tell me you have found my Christina? Yeah, that too. Let's go inside, shall we? It's warm in here. Not cold like outside, Eduardo. Where is she, senor? You have no right to torment me. It can go badly for you. For all of us. You and me. Where is she, senor? I must go to her. She's at the convent of St. Cecilia with her mother. Ah. Don't bother with your coat and hat, Eduardo. You won't need them. What? You won't need them. We'll bring Christina to you. If she wants, we'll let her visit you in her cell. What are you trying to tell me, senor? I'm not trying, Eduardo. It's easy to say. You're under arrest for the murder of Roberto Segura. You are insane. It had me fooled, Eduardo, for a long time. Such an airtight alibi. All because we thought the boy was murdered at 9 o'clock. You have a reason to believe it was at another time? Yeah. Say around 11. That was neat, Eduardo, killing him, then letting his body sit in your car in the cold air so that rigor mortis would set in quickly. You talk with the mouth of a babbling idiot. And you brought him to his room, and because it was warm there, Dr. Sinsky figured the boy had been dead for three hours. Because that's how long rigor mortis might take in a warm room. But in the cold, in a car with open windows, it doesn't take so long, huh, Eduardo? No. You are right, senor. It is a good way to kill a good way to deceive the stupid ones of the law. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty stupid, Eduardo. We don't understand how it means to possess things like Goya tiles or a daughter like Christina, your Christina. You killed her to keep her to yourself, didn't you, Eduardo? No one good enough for Christina but you. It is as you say, senor. No one good enough. 
So I had Roberto killed. You had help? Of course. I do not soil my hands unnecessarily, senor. Johnny Martinez helped me. Why should he do that? Because I promised him, Christina. <laughs> but you, senor, or you, I need no help. I will kill you with my own hands. Give me the gun, Eduardo. <laughs> it frightens you, brave, senor. Yeah, it does that. Give it to me. <laughs> Drop it. Now I've got the gun, Eduardo. What does it do to you? Frighten you, huh? You will not kill me. You will not. Let's go, Eduardo. you got to be booked for murder. I can get to Johnny Martinez later. You got to him already, Clover. Well, Johnny. Welcome. Eavesdropping, huh? No, no. Don't turn around, Clover. Now that you've peeped at my gun, just keep in mind. Sure, I've been eavesdropping. The next room. I don't mind. You can come to headquarters, too. Shoot him, Johnny. Kill him. You should have killed him last night when you knocked him unconscious. Kill him! All right, all right. If you say so, Senor Perez. All right. Just this before you do, Johnny. Eduardo would like to know about it. Know about what, Senor? The, the gun I'm pointing at you. If Johnny shoots me, I'm just liable to react. I'm liable to grab onto something when Johnny's bullet hits me. The trigger of this gun, maybe. Then you're liable to be shot, Eduardo. Killed, maybe. Got a point, Senor Perez. Uh, well? I... Johnny! Do what? What do you want me to do? Drop that gun! Drop it! Drop that gun! Like I was saying, let's go get booked for murder, huh? Broadway. It's an enchanted island or a desert of dust. A crazy dance that starts off wild and winds down to a dirge in bluest time. You look at it one way and it's a magician's pitch with golden mirrors and jeweled fountains. Then you blink and the whole thing dissolves. Your hands are bloody from beating against a wall corroded with pain. It's Broadway. The gaudiest, the most violent the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia. The musical score was composed by Alexander Courage and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. And the program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. The cast tonight included Tony Barrett, Jeanette Nolan, Herb Butterfield, Jack Crucian, Michael Ann Barrett, and Armando Corral. Dinah Shore, Jack Smith, Margaret Whiting, Dick Hames, the Andrews Sisters, Beulah, Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas. These top names in radio are all on CBS regularly. Not once, but five times a week. Top news, top color, top reporting. Lowell Thomas and Ed Murrow each are heard for 15 minutes every Monday through Friday in the early mo mo evening hours. And then there's the wonderful comedy of Beulah, the tops and pops with the Jack Smith, Dinah Shore, Margaret Whiting show... The grand singing of Club 15's Dick Hames, the Andrews Sisters, and Evelyn Knight. You can hear them all on most of these same CBS stations Monday through Friday evenings. Listen tomorrow night. This is Joe Walter speaking. This is CBS, where Wednesday night is Bing Crosby night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>